And just for curiosity's sake, here is my chemistry book uh, that I did when I was 12. And this experiment is actually here. We called it the competition reaction, the competition results. And look, there we go. Magnesium and copper oxide have a fight and make magnesium oxide and copper. The most reactive ends up as an iron. So on the right hand side is the IB data booklet part, copyright IB of the activity series. And the new data booklet, they fixed most of the errors from the old one and introduced a whole bunch more. Thanks IB, they said they'd fix it by Christmas. Okay, top of the list are the most reactive metals, the ones that hate electrons the most. The middle are kind of intermediary reactive metals, and right at the bottom are the unreactive metals. Silver, mercury, gold are really quite unreactive. Yeah, they might be biologically harmful, but they are chemically unreactive. So let me pick one from the top, one from the middle, and one from the bottom. Now why is lithium at the top? I thought the metal that hates electrons the most should be up there, which in this case would be cesium, which is second. Well, it's to do with the hydration energy. Don't worry about that, no problems there. But essentially, top of the list are the most reactive metals, which means it's easy for them to lose their valence electrons. That's how metals react. So it's easy to be oxidized. Oxidation is loss of electrons. So they're the best reducing agent. Reducing agents are themselves oxidized. Which must mean they have low first ionization energies. Or maybe just low ionization energies generally. And at the bottom is gold. That is the least reactive. The IB says a metal activity series ranks metals according to the ease with which they undergo oxidation. Loss of electrons. An activity series, I'm telling you, tells you which metals react with which ions. And the little mantra, the most reactive, ends up as an iron. That will see you through this part of the course. So looking at zinc and copper sulphate, let's do the reaction. So some copper sulphate solution and some zinc metal makes copper and a little bit of zinc sulphate solution. Not much though, not enough to show up against the blue of the copper sulphate though, but it is there. So let's look at another reaction before I attempt to explain it. Silver nitrate and copper goes to silver and copper nitrate. So I had copper wire, silver nitrate, and now the silver nitrate has turned to silver and silver plated the little IB symbol. Maybe I'll send it to the IB because a couple of times I've asked them, why is it that almost every year the extended essay for science is the bottom of the entire pack globally? Isn't that a systematic error, Mr. IB? But they never answer. Bless them. So looking at the first equation, oh, scratch my beard, the most reactive ends up as an iron. So for the first one, zinc is an iron. It's a zinc 2 plus iron. So that must mean zinc is more reactive than copper. And looking at the second equation, copper is ending up as an iron. It's copper 2 nitrate. It's a copper 2 iron. So copper is more reactive than zinc. I've now created a mini activity series. So zinc nitrate and copper, no reaction, as expected. Because zinc is higher on the activity series than copper. Maybe I should buy an Apple Watch, but I do like this one. So what if I added zinc nitrate to silver? Well, let me make the most reactive end up as an iron. I know that zinc is more reactive than silver. So you know what? Nothing changes. The zinc nitrate and the silver are unchanged. So that's no reaction. Nothing will happen if I mix those two together. So what do I see? Well, in the first one, copper sulfate. That's blue. An orange copper is formed, although it looked black in the video. Zinc is a silver metal, and zinc sulfate is colourless. Oh, I put a U there, spell it the British way. It's colourless. For the second one, silver nitrate is colourless. That's a higher level idea, actually. And silver metal is formed. And my orange copper, well, that starts to disappear and turn into blue copper nitrate. 
Okay, a couple more then. Magnesium and H+. Oh, that's an acid. So the most reactive ends up as an iron, and magnesium's higher on the activity series. It's more reactive than hydrogen. So let me put magnesium 2 plus ions. It's group 2, it must be 2 plus. And the hydrogen ion turns into hydrogen gas. Now for the bottom one, sodium is more reactive than aluminium. Now, so there's going to be no reaction there. The most reactive ends up as an iron. The most reactive already is an iron. So no reaction. Nothing to see here. Now looking at the H+, that's actually acid. So anything above the hydrogen in the activity series will react with acids, while anything below won't react with acids, with a minor exception. But that's a general rule. So there's some people wrapping zinc around a pipe, and there's some zinc stuck on that boat. And that's a picture of what happens to the zinc. And that's what happens to the zinc before and after. It starts to react and dissolve into the sea or into the soil. So what's happening here? Well, this is to protect the iron. Iron naturally wants to become iron 2 plus, which is rust. But if I attach zinc, actually, or magnesium, or even aluminium, what will happen is that the rust will not stay as rust, it will turn back to iron. And in reality, it might not even turn to rust. Instead of the iron corroding, the zinc corrodes. And every now and again, you just have to replace the zinc. Clever, right? Eh? One of my first failures in chemistry was I tried to uh, do the rusting of nails. I, unfortunately, I used these sort of nails, which are covered in zinc and therefore will not rust. Uh, I learned that the trick was to use nails that have already rusted because you know that these cheap nails have no protective zinc coating. Of course, you could just uh, use sandpaper to remove the zinc from these nails. And on that board over there is where I make all those videos. I also found this in the book. This is a detention that I got in 1982. Now, the music teacher would give out detentions to anyone who got below average in the tests, and then was always surprised when half the people were in detention. That's because I never cheated off Chris Wilkinson. Chris Wilkinson, if you're there, I wish I'd have sat next to you.